Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns. Hi. Krista Burns Porter. I gotta remember to say that. I'm yeah. I, for those of you who may not know, I got married a couple weeks ago and I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, soon there'll be name changes more official coming through. It's a work in progress. <laughs> um, but I am the host here of the um, Nebraska Library Commission's Encompass Live. Um, we are a weekly online show here broadcast out of Nebraska. Um, we're a webinar, a webcast, an online show, um, whatever you want to call us. We are here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, however, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We record the show every week and we post it on our website afterwards. So you can always go there and um, see the recordings of all of our previous shows. Um, we have them going all the way back to when we first started in January 2009. Um, all of our recordings are there. They're posted to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel publicly. So um, you can go there and see anything we have. Um, we also include in our recording pages um, any presentations people have, like we have one today, the PowerPoint, any handouts, and links to anything that um, any websites that may have been mentioned that were of importance during the show. So you have everything you need there. Um, so please do take a look at our, our archives, and I'll show you that at the end of the show as well, where those all are, um, that you can go and watch all of them. And I think everything works on those old, even those the old ones. We've converted everything. <laughs> um, as I said, we do the show live every Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time. We do a mixture of things here, um, book reviews, mini training sessions, um, interviews, mini demos, you know, we only have an hour, so nothing too complex. Um, basically, anything library related um, is the only criteria we have here. So it's something happening in a library, um, new programs, new services, or something that we think might be useful to libraries. Some of you might think are a little outside the box and you know, wonder why is this on the show? Stick with us, you know, trust us. <laughs> it all comes around to libraries in some way. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, so um, either our live show or our um, archives, um, please do share with any of your friends, colleagues, neighbors, family, anyone who might be think might be of in interested in anything. Um, they are welcome to log into our live show or watch the recordings that are posted up there later. <coughs> Excuse me. We do have um, Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show sometimes to do presentations, things that are services or programs that we're offering or doing through the commission. But we also bring in guest speakers sometimes, and that's what we have this morning. Da. To my left is Rasmus um, Thogerson. He is from Morton James Public Library, which is in Nebraska City, a little south east of here. Yeah. Yeah, well, south, east, east of here, east, or east south of, of Omaha. I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, he is currently the library director there for just until the end of the year. Uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, okay. Yes. He's moving on to a new position, but he's still with us for now, which I is am. great. Yes. <laughs> and um, what they've done at their library is, um, you may have heard of these escape rooms, and I'm sure we're going to explain a little more about that oh, if yeah. you're not sure. Um, we actually have, I think, at least two of them here in Lincoln. Yeah, um, they've kind of become really popular all yeah. over, so yeah. Um, and they've got one at their library, which I think is the first time I've heard of a library based one maybe but that, that um, was the idea they, behind yeah. it at least yeah so, <laughs> so um, he's going to tell us how they came up with it how it got started and actually I think the, one of the coolest part about it is how the kids the, the teens in the um, at, this, at the library were involved in the prog and the um, process so I'll just hand over to you to take sure. it away thank you thanks so much thanks for having does. me Krista well yeah. um well, yes, um, so we, I call this presentation Library Lockdown, how to build an escape room in your library. And uh, I tend to ramble, so stop me if I do. <laughs> and uh, and okay. I, it's it might not be super structured. We'll see what happens. Um, aside from my presentation, uh, I want to point out that I also brought a, a mini um, escape room today. Ooh, so okay. if we will get to that, hopefully at some point. We're not locked in here. We are not logged in here. I can't get will, out uh, until I <laughs> that's that we. I got someone to lock the door here, so now we're stuck in the room. No, um, in this, um, actually what we're getting, we're trying to get me, because uh, I see you have a, a tasty beverage. I do. My, mine is locked in this box, so oh, I, need, no. I need people, either you or the people watching, to, to unlock this Help. at some point. <laughs> we'll get to that later. It's just sort of an interactive element mm -hmm. I, I, I brought. We don't have to if we cool. don't have time. But um, 
is this is also to show how it's easy to make these things on a much smaller scale than what we did at, at our library. Right, um, so you can take it on the road somewhere. Yeah, and, and, and just sort of a, a lot of what I think people should be interested in or would be interested in is how to do this again on a scale, on a shoestring, a shoestring budget on a smaller scale. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah. it was kind of a, a, a large project for us uh, considering the size of our library. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, so I'll get started on sort of the, some of the background here. Um, so, um, last year we applied for what's called the Curiosity Creates Grant, um, which is a grant uh, that is uh, <clears throat> that was done by American Library Association and Disney, and uh, it was it, we, so we we were awarded seven thousand five hundred dollars to do this project, uh, which was to build an escape room in our library um, with the help of, of kids. Um, mm -hmm. So we were one of uh, 79 public libraries across the United States that got this grant, and so we were. When we, when we got the money, uh, we sort of had uh, the whole spring to, to make this project that we came up with happen. And, uh, and then we were sort of evaluated on it. And, and, so, mm -hmm. and, and it was, so that, that's the basic thing. It's called Curiosity Creates. It was a really good grant for us, I think. And it, the idea behind the grant came out of a white paper. Um, I linked to it in the presentation, as you can see here, mm -hmm. inspiring a generation to create critical components of creativity in children. So the, the, the white paper sort of discuss how you can make children more creative, how they can enjoy being creative. And, and so this particular grant was to see how we can use the things in that white paper in the library um, to cool. do programming and whatnot. So the URL might be a little faded out. I see that now on the big screen there at oh, least. That's um, okay. We'll you should include be able to the links click, afterwards. It should be yeah. very clickable and it'll take mm -hmm. you straight to the white paper. If not, you should be able to find it as librarians out there. So <laughs> I do have the title and author, so it should, you should be able to find it. So that was sort of the... The background for it, we were very lucky to get this grant, um, which allowed us to experiment. So we were one of these, uh, quite a few other libraries across the United States that sort of got to play around with something that you normally, you might not have the budget to do, because we sort of, some of the things we had to buy were a little outside of what we normally would spend money doing, but it was really fun to be able to sort of play around and just experiment and, and, and invent things as we went along. Uh, so, uh, so that was a Curiosity Creates grant, and I, I do hope they come by. I, I don't know if they're going to have a new one this year. Um, keep an eye out on, on, on you know, the yeah, list, list Is this a regular grant, or was it just kind of a one I'm not sure what they, there. I mean, last time I heard they weren't sure what, what was going to happen with it, but ah, okay. I mean, keep an eye out uh, yeah, uh, on a ALSC, and then sure mm -hmm. similar things will pop up eventually. Um, yeah, it looks like they've, they've got information now on the website through ALA and ALSC. See, mm. it's got information about the current grants and what was going on so, with yeah. them. So, yeah, so there's a, if you go on yeah. the website, there'll be a bunch of reports and things like that. Um, I'll have some links to it at the end of my presentation as well. Um, and uh, there, so as I put in the presentation, there were some admins from ALSC, and then you also have had an external evaluator who made a final report. So that's mm -hmm. also available as, and the final report also sort of explains a lot of the different programs, because we were just one out of many. And there are a lot of really yeah. cool ones out there. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for inspiration for something to do in your library, I would recommend mm -hmm. checking it out. Um, yeah, because they list a lot of them here. They said there were over 400 applications received, and they only gave out 79 grants. So yeah. So, uh, but they've got them all listed here, and they're putting up information about them. So, so yeah, yeah. It's, just, it, it's very easy to find online. And I, mm -hmm. I recommend so if you're sort of looking for something to do in your library, some, some of your creativity and children, go take a look at it. It's, it, it was really great for us. Um, so I'm just going to tell you sort of our process, what sort of happened. Um, and so the first one is a mess. <laughs> so uh, so basically... It's familiar. <laughs> yeah, well, so what this is is something that might not be uh, completely unknown to some libraries at least. This is sort of... Uh, uh, this used to be the old children's library at the Morton James Public Library. Um, and then we, we had a wonderful addition built in 2002, which meant mm -hmm. that we sort of had this space that was sort of sitting there. And it became a storage area. Um, and then, you know, over time, things accumulated in there. So um, so a part of the reason for um, even wanting to do anything with this space was basically to, to clean up this room and make it sort of available to the public because we had this. It, the room is actually pretty cool. It's sort of hidden mm -hmm. away in the, in the under the library. Um, but we sort of felt that something could be done with it. So that was sort of step mm -hmm. one, just figuring out, okay, um, when I wrote the grant, um, the original part of the original idea came from um, just wanting to do something with that room, repurposing it somehow, so it sort of could be useful for the community. Because um, a storage area, how it can be useful for the librarians working there, but you know, sometimes mm -hmm. if it, it's a good, it's a great room, and we didn't need to store all those things in there. That's at least how I felt. Um, mm -hmm. 
So um, that was sort of a mess. Uh, it, it, it looks more messy. I mean, it was sort of, sort of organized, but nonetheless, you know, it's a lot of things in a small space. Right. Um, we also had some water damage in there, and it was a little bit musty. So, you know, there was many reasons for sort of cleaning up and airing out the room and whatnot. So that, that, that was sort of the background. And then, as you mentioned, escape rooms, we have several in Lincoln already. Um, mm -hmm. there's, I know there are some in Omaha. Yeah. There's a really good ones down in Kansas City as well. Uh -huh. And they're all over the place. There are several thousands, I think, across the United States. Um, so that was sort of the idea. And then, but not just to build an escape room for kids to, to come into. The idea was to, to have the kids build an escape room. And that was sort of where that made our idea novel, I think. It's not mm -hmm. um, necessarily just to have somewhere where they can come in and solve puzzles. Actually, the room as it is now isn't just meant for kids. It's it's pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend just sending three or four kids in there. They wouldn't be able to, to make it out. Um, <laughs> so it's actually... Um, they need an adult. I, 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 usually, out. I would recommend a healthy mix of, of, of children and also sort of play the room. Um, mm -hmm. But it was made by kids. That was the whole point. Having them come in and, and, and sort of have an ongoing project in the library where they made made something out mm -hmm. of it. So, so this was the previous one. So this is uh, step number two. This is another mess. <laughs> so this is mid mid process, so to speak. This is when we had all the stuff cleaned out of the room, and this is so the 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 room itself and other places in the library became sort of. I wouldn't necessarily call them miniature mega spaces, but they became work, work mm -hmm. areas where the, the kids came in and, and filled things, filled these puzzles mm -hmm. and worked on puzzles and solved puzzles and worked on them. So um, so we like to say something like one of our taglines was a mega space in which you make a space because they sort mm -hmm. of come in and, and you know they make uh -huh. something. Um, yeah. um, so what was different about this mess than other craft-oriented messes we had in the library was probably this one was the first uh, one that was ongoing. Oftentimes when we have crafts uh, at, my, uh, at the Modern James Public Library, it's one-off things. Mm -hmm. Like next right. week, we're going to have a mermaid party. We have an exhibit with sea creatures. Oh, cool. So we're going to have the kids come in and they can do mermaid-related crafts, right? Mm -hmm. Which is great. Uh, but it's a one-off thing related to a specific topic. Or, you know, it's a Christmas thing. Or it's a Halloween right. thing. You know, those mm -hmm. things. Uh, but this was more of having a group of kids coming in every Saturday, actually, for, for, for four months. Wow. And in and, and, and continually working on it, that, that, that has some challenges, but that was the idea to have a core group of, of children working on, on these puzzles. But you can't just come in one day and make a bunch of puzzles. You have to yeah. think about it a lot, um, and it has to make sense for the for the kids doing it, and it also has to make sense from a gameplay perspective on the other side of it. So it takes a lot of coordination, mm -hmm. and it, it it takes a lot of time. Um, but anyway, so and that I'm was sure a lot of it is. Um trial and error too. Yeah. I mean, playing through and seeing if it works or not, Absolutely. and having to come up with something new. I mean, there's a lot of things yeah. to consider. I'll get back to some of the gameplay elements a little mm -hmm. later, I think. But there's a lot, of, as you mentioned, yeah, trial and error, and you also have to figure out a way to make sure that it, it works as in, in the in confines of having a game that's supposed to last an hour. You have like an hour of gameplay, so right. the puzzle is it's like a video game. That's how I usually explain it to, to the, mm -hmm. the kids that were there. It, it's not fun if it's too easy. It's not fun if it's too hard either. So it's finding that gameplay balance between things in a puzzle. Um, so that was, that was part of the challenge. But um, with all those challenges, uh, even with thinking about all those, then we come to the next one, which is profit. So this is our <laughs> <laughs> so um, the final step, right? Profit. So this is uh, on our opening night. We had um, we were very, very fortunate in Nebraska City to have a lot of support from the community and, and so we had this is the mayor and his family. And I they, saw an article about them yeah, that so, they so, tried uh, it like out. It, it, right after I got the grant I I asked the mayor if I could lock him in a room for an hour <laughs> and he just looked at me like I was sort of crazy but he does it a lot but but he but he, he played long he's a really really nice guy so mm -hmm. so the point was to have like a big opening night for the community where we would lock the mayor and his family in there um, and see if they could make it out. Mm -hmm. And so we made a party out Good of it. And we had all we had all the, the kids that were we had somewhere between uh, we had 15 to 20 core children coming in. Every it sort of fluctuates because sometimes they have sports, they have events going on, mm -hmm. you know. But we had um, somewhere between I think the, the least kids we had were like 12 maybe, and then up to 35. Wow. 35 was that was a crazy day. Uh, mm -hmm. That was in, that was in the beginning. You know, have some. Sometimes some of them, they stop coming, and then some of them bring in friends or siblings, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But we had a core group that kept coming. So this was the profit stage. This is when we were completely done with it, um, and we, we could have this big opening house. So so we had an open house with the kids and all the families. We had 100, 100 people in the building just having, like, a party, <laughs> uh, having some pizza. 
while the mayor and his, his family was trying, trying to, to, to save, save, save the world. <laughs> uh, and so save the world from the zombie apocalypse, which happened to, which ended up being the theme for this room. Mm -hmm. um, so so that, that it turned out really well. And now what we have is we have the escape room in, in the basement um, of our library in that room. And um, and in the, in the community or anyone really can come in and use it for mm -hmm. free. We do accept free will donations, but we don't require it. So you can come in and you can sort of play in the room for an hour and, and have a good time. Um, and we like last week I had three three groups going through, and this week mm -hmm. we have one tomorrow. So mm -hmm. we still have people interested in it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's not hear about it. Yeah, I had a lot of you know word of word of mouth as well. People asking about it. Um, mm -hmm. I think in terms of marketing, something like the mayor coming in and that big opening, that helped a lot. Um, right. So that, that really got the, the word out there. And also the fact that we had our room ended up being like a zombie mm -hmm. theme room. So we, we shot a zombie movie during that. And that also got some press and some interest in it. Um, so that, that, was a lot, that was fortunate for us. Mm -hmm. um, I, one thing I would recommend, if you're actually building an entire room, I would, I would give a, a date when it, it's getting dismantled. Because mm -hmm. I had the feeling that a lot of people in Nebraska City, they just asked sort of, they assume it's going to be there forever, so mm -hmm. they don't they don't feel the urgency of actually booking the room. So we, we so we had more now than we had in the opening weeks because people were just I just seem more interested now. Honestly, uh, um, Halloween's coming up, they might be looking for something like that. Like you know, yeah. I guess as the word sort of spreads a little bit, so mm -hmm. it's been, been sort of I, I was expecting I was expecting a lot more people in the beginning, but it's sort of just been a, a steady stream of people. Cool. Uh, no, it, it, and it's a lot of fun, and it's something else to have in there. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so that's. Does it have? And I'm, you might get into this later too. Is there much like if someone's already gone through it? Is there much replayability? No, I no, mean, once you've done it, you know the it. you know no, the that's, that's, answers. Yeah. And, yeah. I think yeah. if you want to play it several times, so the way these things works is that is that you shouldn't you shouldn't all work on every puzzle. So if you technically want to play it again, you could come in for people and then just you have to agree on working mm -hmm. on uh, separate puzzles, but. Um, no, it, it's a one-off deal. I mean, because mm -hmm. we don't, again, we don't have time to to rebuild it. It's, it's fairly, it's it, doing it this this yeah. kind of extensive. I'd say is a fairly mm -hmm. time-consuming process. Right. So this yeah. it take a long time. Because I know long. some of the, I think the one here in Lincoln has multiple mm -hmm. versions of it, and sure. they're also a more complex thing. It's like that's their business. Sure. Yeah. They, that there's like a short version or a longer version, mm -hmm. or there's different story, different rooms you can do, different stories you want to do at a library. Of course, you wouldn't have that many options. And we also don't have it. Yeah, we, we have the one room, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's really what we have. And then you know what we um, what we also have, don't have is time to keep reinventing it because there's actually right. a room in Nebraska City now as well, and and they change their puzzles ongoing. They mm -hmm. change things up, but right. uh, we don't really have the luxury of having people making money off this. Even though I just had a slide saying profit, um, <laughs> but but so it's just you know <laughs> it's a it's a one-off thing. Um, but uh, I I have I have had some people in where they they took they took like it was a teacher. She came in with her work. Mm -hmm. it, and and then later on she brought her uh, class in, so sure. she was sort of still involved in it, but she mm -hmm. wasn't actively helping out. So right. that could be fun on the other end. Um, so anyway, so this is the easy sort of saying. Okay, this is sort of what happened in our room. So so why did we do this? What's the whole purpose of all this? Well, I, I also I already mentioned repurposing the library space or so figuring out something, some other way of using the space we have in the library. And then we also wanted to have this sense of ownership. Another thing we have in our library that I really like, we have all these handprints in the children's library where, where the kids, are, again, 2011, I think at least, mm -hmm. they, they put their handprints mm -hmm. up on the wall, mm -hmm. and then they, they sign their name and date it. And this, I like the way of sort of getting taking ownership yeah. of the library. This is another way of doing it, because we had this, this old room, and I allowed them to paint on the walls, and I allowed them to, sort of, to break some things if it made the room more fun, mm -hmm. and sort of to just create that sense of you know, ownership. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a good reason for it. And then also for having this, another big, big part of it was the ongoing programming I wanted to get done. I wanted to have like an ongoing program versus just having that one, those one-off events. And then it was a good way for me to, to create some community engagement. Again, um, we had the mayor coming in. We had some, some, some hype around the zombie thing we had. Like in our zombie movie, we had the chief of police <laughs> like act in it. So mm -hmm. it's a good way to get people involved in it and just know the library is there and remind people that the library is very much a vibrant part of the community. So, so that was that was a, that was a, that was a, the marketing. That was a reason mm -hmm. too. You know, just create something new and exciting and sort of create hype about the around the library. And then 
another uh, reason, I call it repeatability and modularity here, but it was trying to understand if this is even feasible. Because it's one of the, no one's done it before, as far as we can tell. Yeah. Uh, people, like escape rooms exist, but not built by children. So it right. was kind of an exploration of how much sense does this make to do? Um, how feasible is it in, in a library our size, or in, in any library really? Um, so we learned a lot about what to do and what not to do, which is mm -hmm. great. That's, that's sort of what that's you want to do. It. Yeah, trial uh, and error, fail, failure, and yeah, we, trying we, something different. Yeah, We fail a lot. I mean, <laughs> I had some things where I spent way too much prep time on something that no one cared about. <laughs> like I had this thing with a um, complete side note here, but so I had this at, at first at our first uh, session, they had, the kids had to solve puzzles. So sort of get into the, the, the feeling of it. The, mm -hmm. the first session was just them solving puzzles. And I had this, I made magical fizzy fruit, which is basically dry ice and fruit. Hmm. So you can, you eat like a grape and it's fizzy, hmm. which is, it becomes so, carbonated. It's a yeah. chemical trait and it's fun. <laughs> um, so I spent way too much time getting dry ice and do all this thing and no one really cared about it. They were just interested <laughs> in the puzzles. So it was just one of those things where maybe, know, maybe yeah. stop focusing on something and spend hours doing this thing and no one, no one cared. I, I cared about it and like one other person. But So you just learn that. Don't, don't do fizzy fruit, I guess. Um, so, and, and the, the final reason we really wanted to, we, to do it was this thing we call structured creativity, which is mm -hmm. having kids come in and do something um, that is going towards something bigger than themselves mm -hmm. um, and having sort of creating that framework or attempting to create a framework that sort of makes sense and, and moves them toward an overarching goal. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so we had this timeline we made. This is the ideal thing. So we had one month where we actually solved puzzles. So what that was is first, we taught them how to solve puzzles and we, we built puzzles for them to solve. Um, and we had, we built some simple versions of, of an escape room in that room and sort of had them try to get out of it. So we had like a Christmas themed one. It was after Christmas, but you know, they didn't mm -hmm. care. It's, Christmas is fun. And, and, and so after the, the one month of actually making puzzles, then you have two months of puzzle, uh, solving puzzles. Then you have two, two months of making them where you sort of start making the building the room and then you have two, two weeks of testing at the end and then you're done. I mean, that didn't happen at all that way, but that was sort of the <laughs> ideal version of how it's supposed to be, right? Because yes. um, then zombies attack. So, so what I mean by zombies attack? Well, um, let's go back to the other slide here. Um, when you have, um, let's say, 20 kids on average and they come in every Saturday for uh, an hour and a half, you need, <laughs> it has to be, it, more structured than I thought it, it was going to have to be. So it was very, it became very chaotic at times mm -hmm. kids, to manage all yes. that. Kids can be very chaotic, they get bored quickly mm -hmm. and you have to make sure that things get done. So even though you have a timeline, it's, it can be hard to stick to that. Um, mm -hmm. And then something happened. Put in like, extra buffer time and everything. Yeah, you that's very kids. important. <laughs> and I think to have, um, not be afraid of, well, I think not to be afraid of menial tasks because sometimes you have too many kids kid to adult ratio and then just have them do something that contributes to the larger thing without having them necessarily build something themselves. So so a lot of it is that, I mean, if you look at an escape room, it has several components. So you have this, this puzzle making, you need to come up with puzzles. Then you have the storytelling element, which is the story behind the puzzle. Because you're not just it's trying not to just solve, you're, yeah, not, you're not just trying to, we have a, a miniature one here, we're not just trying to solve open three locks, we're trying to do, in this case, we're trying to get me an energy drink, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You can come up with a better story than, than getting me an energy drink, I hope. Um, <laughs> this is just what we're doing today, but have some sort of the flavor. It's like when you play a board game, mm -hmm. like we have, you have the gameplay elements and the components, but the, the other side of it is the flair. So it's just like a horror game. If you mm -hmm. think about a gameplay wise, the gameplay is, there are only so many types of gameplay, but the rest is sort of the, the flair and the story behind it. So that's the all. Aside Without the from make, story, it's just all the same thing over and over again. It's I mean, it's just, I mean yeah. you, can, you can you can solve the same puzzle in a in hundred different stories, and, and it'll give you a different experience because it's part of a different story. Um, and and finally, so so what the kids did wasn't just to have to make puzzles. It was also creating that story, that narrative around what they were doing. And it was building props because you have to sort of fill the room with stuff that makes it look like the story they are trying to to to, to tell. Mm. So in our case, it became a zombie attack. So mm -hmm. the story is that I have something here called the Journal of uh, Dr. Morton McBrains. <laughs> We're from the Morton mm -hmm. James Public Library. So uh, there's a story of, of uh, this doctor who's trying to create the, a cure for cancer, and he, he made zombies instead. And now they're loose uh, in Nebraska City. And 
and you're sort of stuck in this room and the antidote, he locked the antidote in, in a safe in the room, but, and you have one hour to find the antidote. Uh, and if you don't, it, it, then you turn into a zombie yourself and then yeah. sort of everything ends, you know. Um, Once so, one of you is a zombie, that's it. <laughs> so yeah, that's, then the world sort of ends, right? Um, so, so by saying that zombies attacked is partially that the part of the chaos that comes with that is then we decided to, to make a movie. Because um, you know, in the in the room, typically in the escape room, you have like let's say one hour to mm -hmm. get out, and you have a clock and sort of tick it down. Mm -hmm. The idea sort of emerged to have a, a, a movie showing what went on outside the the the, the room. Oh, while you were in yeah, there, yeah. Well, so this. you know, oh, zombies okay. sort of wandering around. Um, mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this part of it, but then because so, suddenly now we had to shoot a zombie movie too. So that aside from building year. an escape room, we also had to make a zombie movie, which ended up being. A lot of fun, but yeah. suddenly we also had to do that. Um, and we were really lucky because we, the uh, the local radio station, B103, they helped out. We had, they had a camera guy who was great and editing as well. Hmm. So he just volunteered to help out with it. So we, we got a lot of help. But that's um, a, that's a whole other project, making a movie. Yeah, and I know. That so that's sort of editing became, and uh, script writing and everything. So suddenly yeah. it became a movie, a project within the project. So that was a, it was kind of a, we had some busy weekends and we had some <laughs> pretty amazing volunteers that. Um, that helped out uh, more than I could have. I mean, if I had known how much time it, it was, it ended up taking, I would never have asked anyone to, <laughs> to help out. But I'm really glad we did. It ended up well. It ended up to be it ended up really a lot of fun. Um, so zombies attacked and everything become chaos, right? And and the whole project was chaotic, uh, but fun um, throughout the mm -hmm. process, really. Um, so, but we did survive. <laughs> And uh, so this is the this is our opening night, and you have what you see there is me doing a ribbon cutting with the Nebraska uh, City Tourism and Commerce, the local chamber of commerce, and uh, and and the mayor and, and all the kids that sort of were involved in the project. The project. Mm -hmm. So it was really good. And then we had that opening party, and we had pizza, and the mayor got out, and he got they, his family got out with, I think like. Less than five minutes left, uh, and that's perfect. Because then you yeah. know it. Because it, if they don't make it out, you know that's not a lot of fun. Because you want no. they want you want the mayor to save the city and the world, right? <laughs> Otherwise, um, and okay. uh, but you also don't want him to make it out in in ten minutes. Because then it's not. Because yeah, that's that gameplay balance. So mm. and we honestly had most of our groups uh, in that uh, less than ten minutes. Sometimes they just don't make it out, and then sorry, then you just die, right? The world ends. But most of the time, they tend to make it out with approximately 10 minutes left. We do have a person in the room helping out a little bit if they're too stuck, so it's not you're com not completely left to your own devices. Mm -hmm. You can sort of get a little bit of help as you go along. Uh, so is that um, someone did ask a question yes. that about um, for creation of the program? Did you have like an adult facilitator working with them, or was it just pretty much the kids taking it all on? Or? It was all, it was, a, yeah, we were adult facilitators. Mm -hmm. So we, we had volunteers that were regular volunteers that came in. Okay. And we had a, a parent, uh, I volunteered my wife to, mm -hmm. to help out. And then we had a young couple who was great. Mm -hmm. uh, they were sort of the regulars. And then we had other volunteers on and off coming and going. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a lot of you know plan trying to plan out ahead of time what each volunteer, because they weren't part of it during the week. So it was mm -hmm. trying to plan out ahead of time um, what they were supposed to be doing on uh, today. Now you do this with so many kids. Right. So no, don't lead them to themselves. <laughs> it, it, just, it just doesn't work yeah. that way. I thought yeah. it was going to be more hands off, but it turned out to be really you hard need to a lot of guidance. guidance. Yeah. And which, they get off on tangents and things. They yeah. do, and, and you know, and they I, I, most of the the kids we had, they tend to want to make it really hard. Mm. They have these. They have these really elaborate schemes for how to make it impossible. <laughs> and then I try to. You have to try to explain it over and over again. That hey, but that's not really. Imagine you're playing this as a video fun. game yeah. or you're a board game. You also want to have someone. You want people to have a chance at least. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have that sort of balance. And if they're writing a story, they get. I say, when they're writing a story about it, and so and sort of what they want to be in the room. They can have some pretty unrealistic expectations of trap doors and robots, like they can actually <laughs> move around, because that's a little beyond what you can do, yeah. even in a professional escape room. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's completely impossible for, 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 for a library to do. Well, it's not impossible, but it, for us it was uh, with yeah. the resources we had. Um, so, but we did make it out, um, and it was, mm -hmm. it was really a lot of fun, and I thought it was a really successful experience mm -hmm. for us. Um, so here's just how to survive, how, how we saw, what I would recommend doing based on what I did and didn't do, I guess. Um, but the most important thing is you have to like puzzles. I mean, because mm. you, you, you can't just make a group of your staff 
okay, now you do this. They can come, you can come and ask me how sort of to set it up, and I have a better plan for how to set it up now, I think. I would have a better idea of what it would take. But if you don't have volunteers or staff working with the kids mm -hmm. and liking it, then it's just not a lot of fun. I mean, it goes, it's, not, it's kind of a standard yeah. thing to say, but it really is important. It's Otherwise, true. Liking doing puzzles and yeah. creating them is two different things. It, it is. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have to think about that, and you also have to think about that that kids don't necessarily have to make, you can actually have kids in that they never have to make a puzzle, but then they have to like telling a story. We're mm -hmm. trying to get a little bit of everything and that worked out well, uh, but you have to sort of think about that. So you, you just need people that are motivated to work with them. Um, otherwise, it's just not gonna, not gonna fly. Um, and then we did spend a lot of time in the beginning marketing it this to, the, to, the, uh, to the schools uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that you get, you get kids to show up. Because we didn't actually, since it's a mm -hmm. volunteer program, they're supposed to be there for four months. You don't actually know how many, uh, how many they're going to show up. They're not always going to show up. So, oh, no, and I was, I was really time. worried because yeah. we only had, uh, I think, six uh, confirmations before our first session. And, you know, mm -hmm. so you just don't know. And you, that's, uh, I think most people that have done programming knows this sort of feeling of, I'm not going to say dread is a little strong, <laughs> but, you know, you don't want it to fail. You want people to come and see what you work for and experience it. So it's kind of a hard thing if no one shows up. Yeah. Uh, so so what we really did was we I did a lot of uh, – I did some outreach with the schools, and I, I got in touch with some people that are really good at marketing on my behalf. So it's just I had some 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 – some school teachers that I, I sort of sold on the idea, so they're very good at marketing. So it ended up being no, no problem at all. We got more than 30 kids the first time. Nice. And they just sort of showed up, and I was really surprised. <laughs> they, they just kept coming, and I was really happy with that. Um, but then we also got a little overwhelmed because it was more. Yeah, I was going to say, did you have enough for everybody to do that? So, yeah, well, we did, we did, and then we, we had to rethink how we did everything. Um, so, and then, so I would say making pre sign up mandatory versus just saying you can't show up if you. Because I, 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 I didn't want to be. I didn't want to exclude anyone because I wanted to have enough. Mm -hmm. So I was just going with, hey, you know, you really have to. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, the first time you do something, you don't know how popular it's going to be. So yeah. If I was to do it, if I were to do it again, I would make make it mandatory so you know exactly how many kids are going to show mm -hmm. up. Uh, another thing I would say, the 90 minutes is a lot of time. Mm -hmm. They do lose focus. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, after like 45 minutes, and then you maybe maybe an hour. That's probably better than 90 minutes. It's a lot. You can get a lot done in 45 minutes if you mm -hmm. know what they're supposed to be doing. Right. Um, so and so, I would say probably go for an hour, 90 minutes. It's not that time we couldn't pass the time, but you know, it's also exhausting to have to you know run around and having six, seven kids working on something for an hour. It's also for the volunteers to have you know for their sake. Um, and then I would really recommend, we were really lucky. Uh, we had some of our volunteers that, one of them, he is a computer scientist. So he was into oh. robotics and he, underst he understood the, the tech side of it. Um, mm. for some of, uh, one of our, a couple realistic. of our puzzles are those, yeah. like we have like, I don't know if you know Dash and Dot, there's some of these robots, mm -hmm. the kids. That we've had some, on, the, on yeah. the show, we've had some people do with robots. Yeah, so, so you know those robots, ones, yeah. and using, uh, Blockly and Scratch, which is this programming software mm -hmm. that, that, that the kids use on those. That's uh, having someone that knows how to do that is, is, is pretty crucial. Otherwise, I wouldn't necessarily bring it in. It becomes a little bit boring if, if you have to figure it out. It also becomes stressful if you have to work on it while the kids are waiting, just looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's another thing I just really just just prepare for it and know, know you have people that know how to do the puzzles. Uh, and then we have a part two. I would say I have a staff to kid ratio of having no more than four kids per adult. We ended mm -hmm. up having way more at, at times, and it just becomes mm -hmm. stressful. And you know, they it we did it week. We did it on a Saturday, so they had a lot of things in their mind. And, you know, we fed them sugar, so <laughs> I don't <laughs> that know. might be a, I, I don't know. So they were, you know, they were they were tip, hectic at times. Less time. sugar. Uh, um, so so just having no energy enough. drinks for the kids. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would say that. Because I, my goal with it was to have, I, mean, I, I probably, if I were to do it again, I would choose fewer kids, but more focus on it. But I was really, I mean, I was just more concerned about numbers than I think I should have been. But sometimes in the first time you're doing it, you want to have a lot. You want to show something for it, right? You want to show a lot of kids show up. And mm -hmm. they did. But it, it, if you want to do, have 20, 25 kids, you also need at least five adults. I'm mm -hmm. saying maybe even six. Um, and then... A lot of what the, the white paper I mentioned in the beginning from mm -hmm. Curiosity Creates, it's talked about unbound creativity um, and how they can just sort of make whatever they want, and which is really good mm -hmm. in that sort of brainstorming phase. 
But once you actually get down to making things, I would not recommend that either. I think it's it's important not to give them just make it too loose and too freely uh, anything. They just build a puzzle. Some direction yeah. to after they so, so what, what, brainstorm what, what ended yeah. up being great for us was having puzzles um, and then making and so showing okay this is a puzzle you have to solve this puzzle and now think about how you can make that puzzle your own mm -hmm. so and that can you can make it your own in many ways like if you have some just some math for our problem you can make a similar math problem with other numbers and that's a basic thing you can also make it in real life that's something that sort of makes a lot of sense so instead of having something on a piece of paper make it out of clay and make it tactile mm -hmm. um, and then it's just a, if they get the basic principle of one puzzle, then they can build on that and, and just make it their own. And, and again, we had a zombie-themed room, mm -hmm. so make it zombie-themed. So instead of counting fruit, whatever, count brains. You know, instead, <laughs> instead of looking for, right. for something with with, uh, with with Christmas, you look for something with a virus. You know, so you can mm -hmm. be, so again back to the flavor thing. Um, and then it's important to ask for help. I mentioned we had the chief of police and the local uh, uh, radio TV station uh, help out, and, and that we had, and we uh, there's so many things we could have done if we hadn't just reached out and just asked for help. And I think if you have something like this yeah. that's kind of fun. People don't mind helping out. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they volunteer their time, and, and and everything became a lot better for it. Get the community involved, definitely. Yeah, that, especially that, that's the mayor and the I mean, yeah, exactly the mayor yeah. as well. That's another thing. Really, just say hey, you know, we have this thing. It sounds a little different, but I think it's going to be fun and the kids mm -hmm. are going to have a lot of fun. And I think it's going to add value to the library and the community. So would you mind playing along? And, and mm -hmm. I have not, not, not a single person sort of turned me down. Some people had yeah. something else that to do suddenly, but, but no one said they didn't <laughs> want to be involved. Um, right. So, so that, that was really valuable for us as well. And then uh, another thing, that's back to the whole time thing. You should always have a plan for the entire session. And have and I mentioned that earlier, having simple backup tasks if something falls through. Like mm -hmm. if a volunteer suddenly can't be there, mm -hmm. and you have a group of kids that now they can't work on this puzzle, have something that they can work on. So in our case, we fill the room with zombie-related puzzles, but we also have zombie-related mm -hmm. props. Mm -hmm. So have some boxes they can paint with biohazard science, and you know, have something that can be done. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. that's not a high, that doesn't require a lot on your end, right. but just make sure they still have a good time while doing it. Um, so that's just something that's important. Uh, um, so, so we had an entire room, like we had seven thousand five hundred dollars. We we were able to buy a, a flat screen TV to put our movie up on. We were able to buy laptops, Chromebooks, and robots, and all that, and that's mm -hmm. expensive, you know. Yeah. I mean, and most libraries will not necessarily have that. Um, right, having applying for the grant, and always looking for grants for anything you want to do is a good idea. But so, yeah, so, you can't so, always so have that. So something we really thought a lot about, and I, I, we thought a lot about while doing it, and I thought a lot about afterwards is how to do it for cheaps, like a shoestring solution. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I, I put put a, a something called breakout edu up here uh, on the on the slides, and what that is is a uh, it's a resource for for school teachers basically uh, for how to um, in, incorporate puzzles in in the classroom. And so what, what they okay. used, what we relied heavily on and were inspired by uh, was something like this. So this is a, uh, they call this a breakout box. You can mm -hmm. buy them on their website for like $100, but what really is, uh, this is not a $100 thing. But you can buy wooden boxes that are nice mm -hmm. looking with a logo on. Yeah. This is a $4 box from Walmart, and then okay. this is like uh, maybe $30 of locks plus a hat from Amazon. Mm -hmm. So what this is, is three locks, um, so let's say $50 in total. And then the rest, so this is a, a miniature escape room, basically. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, I, I want my energy drink. <laughs> I've been yammering on for like 45 minutes at this point, so I'm getting thirsty. Mm -hmm. So what I want, so, I, so, so the story right now, for example, for this one would be to open this box and get me my energy drink. You can come up with a much better story, I'm sure. So this is, this is, this is a $50 escape room. So it, really what an escape room is, is just sort of a, a, a lock with a story behind it. That's really all mm -hmm. it has to be. Um, you don't have you need to have an entire room full of no. things. Um, and so that's what I was thinking too. Are people places that don't have and uh, like you had that separate had leftover room, storage yeah. room exactly, that you can yeah. actually lock them in. You can do something. Yeah, you, you know, think outside the box of just uh, something over in this corner of the library. Mm -hmm. You've got to figure this out to exactly. Yeah. It can just be that if you're ambitious, you can have several of these around the library. You know, you can have. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so this this particular has. Um, 
can you can hold six locks. You can have six. Yeah, it's got six different. Um, it could it could have um and so on this one we have a number lock and a word lock and a directional lock. Um, there are many types of locks out there. Just go mm -hmm. on Amazon and look, you know, and then you can sort of see what what so build the puzzles around what the solutions could be. Mm -hmm. um, so that's this is like I say fifty dollars. You can probably get it cheaper if you look for sales. Um, mm -hmm. And then use uh, normal craft supplies. A lot of the things we ended up working on were things we already either, either we already had that in that room we cleaned out, or we had some some great uh, children's librarians that have been working there for a long time and just have all these craft supplies because you know all sorts of leftover they, they have all yeah. these scraps lying around, you know, and and they tend to be pretty organized about it. So you can ask about a, you know mm -hmm. a lot of things and they will already have that lying around. Um, yeah. I think that's true for many libraries. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to go out and buy all these new things. It's a way to sort of Use a lot of things you already have lying around, so uh, so that, that I think that is that's really important. Then I have a, a slide here, a, a bullet point about modularity with the software. Um, so what that is is um, if you, um, in our case, we had we we wrote a computer script that that we had ten of these boxes in our room basically. Mm -hmm. We wrote a script, so each of in, inside each of these boxes were like a, a password for the computer. You mm -hmm. had to put open ten boxes and put in ten passwords in the computer. Mm -hmm. um, but and that's that was each step. Yeah, to and then finally, it. and finally, the computer gives you the computer terminal in the room, gives you the solution for um, for the for the safe, and then you can open the safe and you get the antidote, which is a clay bottle, you know, they made. You know, <laughs> it, 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 it's kids making yeah. it, and it's really fun. Uh, so, uh, what the point of mm -hmm. that being that. We have what we call discrete puzzles and customizable difficulty levels. So mm -hmm. you can you can you can change that script easily to say you only have to solve two puzzles out of ten. Right. Or you only have two. You have three puzzles. You don't have to sort of have ten puzzles. That was just what mm -hmm. we ended up for balance. Uh, so and, and, and that's something that then can be modified for exactly. the age level too. Yeah, Fewer exactly. Fewer puzzles, exactly. easier puzzles for the younger kids. So you, yeah. for example, like tomorrow, I'm going to have a uh, a group of. Uh, I think seventh or eighth graders from middle school in Nebraska City come in, and they uh, they only have half an hour, so they're oh, enough. Okay. But but so you what you don't do is you don't say you have an hour obviously, uh, but say you have half an hour to solve five puzzles. Mm -hmm. So that's it can be kind of modified on different levels. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's and also in what I also mentioned that discrete puzzles, uh, we have ten puzzles in the room, they don't interact with each other. So mm -hmm. I think that's important too. If you, it makes thing it, especially if yeah. I think it's easier if you are, do if you do a professional escape room, you can probably have something that moves from puzzle to puzzle. Mm -hmm. But if you have different kids working on different puzzles, having them interact is just another layer of complexity that you don't necessarily need in your life. Right. <laughs> so so I would just say make them completely discrete. So we have ten completely discrete puzzles that have nothing mm -hmm. to do with each other. Uh, and that's a good way that you can modify it for the group only has yeah, half yeah. an hour. The so kids you only you solve, take out some of them and just do these. Just yeah. you, either you say only solve puzzles one through five, or you know only solve the puzzles on this side of the room. You know that mm -hmm. depends on, on what you end up having. Uh, that's nice that it's modifiable. That yeah, way. yeah. So and, and then then we also what I also think you can do is use what you already have in your collection for puzzles. And then mm -hmm. like one of the puzzles we have is um, it's a it's a library. Um, it's uh, but they had so the kids had so we had a bunch of you know discard books, wheel books, mm -hmm. and they had the, all the dust jackets. So what we did was turn the dust dust jackets inside out because they're white on the inside, mm -hmm. and then the kids wrote their own titles on the spines. Yeah. And then there's a puzzle related to all that. You know, it's just kind of one of those things. We had a ton of wheel books, and you can either sell them, and eventually we will. But for now, now they are part of a puzzle, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And you can also have. We had in the beginning when we taught them how to do puzzles, we had library related puzzles. You know, go find, you know, some Dewey related, not too mm -hmm. deep into it. You had to look up things in the catalog, yeah. run there in the library, figure this out. Mm -hmm. So that was the case. That's somebody was actually asking, what kind of puzzles did you have them do on, work on in the first, in the first, in the initial month? That was when very much starting out things like that. You know, it, we, yeah. it, it was similar to what we ended up having in the room itself. Mm -hmm. And you can see the puzzles. Um, I have a Provided the, the sort of the manual here. Mm -hmm. So what this is is this is a manual for the ten puzzles. I don't know if anyone can see this, but mm -hmm. this is like puzzle number three here, and mm -hmm. then this is how to solve it and how to reset it. Oh, okay. So this so, is like the guide. Yeah, the, like, yeah. So, so this is a cheat yeah. sheet. Okay. Um, so so and I I'll you have this document now, so you can just mm -hmm. put that give that to people. So it's. So they were simple puzzles, and I relied heavily on the Breakout Edu uh, like uh, resource for that. 
they have a Google, they have a shared Google folder where you can basically go in and find free puzzles. So I, I rely on them to sort of, so I didn't have to come up with all of it myself. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time to come up with a puzzle that makes sense. Um, so I would recommend going oh, yeah. there, um, especially because you're working within the confines of locks. You have, they have to match these locks as well. Um, so, um, and since the breakout EU sort of framework, uh, they, they tend typically operate with locks like these. It was, it's an easy sort of way to, to tap mm -hmm. into that. Um, Find the solution, yeah. Yes. Uh, so let's see here. So this is this is where I'm, so now just for fun, right? So let's, oh no, we're trapped. I didn't know exactly until I, <laughs> earlier this, this we morning, realized what we're gonna, yeah. so let's say we're trapped in this room, right? Mm -hmm. So now, yeah. now you have three locks. Mm -hmm. And you are trying to get me my monster energy ring. We're not sponsored by, I know you're drinking one too, but we're uh, not yes. sponsored by, <laughs> this is completely coincidental. Um, mm -hmm. So um, so this is an example of how an escape room could sort of work, right? And the story could be anything. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're trapped in here and the key is to open this box. So now you have a number lock. This is super simple. I made this this morning. This is a terrible example. Um, so so now you have to Google this because there's no way. Oh, yeah. Because I figured we wouldn't have a library collection in here. Under normal circumstances, you would have to look this up in a, like, an actual resource somewhere, right? Mm. Uh, but since we don't have a library, I didn't, wasn't expecting you to have a collection of books in here. You're probably going to have a number. Uh, um, is that it? 25? No. Yeah. The world Smurf world record smashed by 2,510 so Swansea let's, students. Well, let's see. Dressed up as Smurfs. Wow, that's a lot of blue. That's a lot of blue. <laughs> I had to say Swansea because I learned later on that that, that, that that's been broken since then. So yeah, oh, no. today go. Okay. <laughs> so that, that that's an easy one. That's the first one. Oh. So this is yeah, a. Yeah. I mean, you shouldn't. Necessarily, I wouldn't use Google for this, but it's just a show sort of. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea is to look up in resources, obviously, and you know have to. So look you can up there. make it with resources of either if was it based on the library, you know, go to this book. Database find databases book, as or well, something you know, that's in that I mean, room that would uh, have the answer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there could be books around, and depending on again, if you're doing the. The smaller thing, then you know, I would go look it up in the library somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's sort of one example. So let's see the next one. This is a, a this is a terrible. I mean, oh, God. So this, yeah, um, we Chess. probably don't have enough time to to uh, <laughs> to, to, to this, but this is an example of, of something I made the kids sort of go through. Mm -hmm. So I, I put it on the top. You see, it's a directional lock. So this is this looks like this. I don't think it's feel at home can see yeah, this. Yeah, it's a lock that has like four arrows going uh, in each of the directions, so, just like the picture on there. Yeah. yeah. So, so I've what never you seen that kind of lock? That's cool. So there's another, and it's kind of it, you do the locks aren't necessarily you don't need them necessarily. It could also just be a solution you put into a computer. But having that tangible thing really mm -hmm. seems to re resonate well with the, with the children. And I really I like it too. They're kind of cool, as you say. It's kind of a cool lock, right? Mm -hmm. So the, um, I'm going to help you out with this one. Yeah. Uh, unless people yet. at home want to <laughs> write a solution real quick. but um, So the, the point of this is that I do, I do not play chess by any chance. I played when I was a kid with my so, dad, but not for a long time. So so <laughs> the, the point is you, you need someone. This is also this is, might be an example of a puzzle that could be hard if no one knows how to play chess. Mm -hmm. So this is, we don't have this. We were considering having something like this in the final room. But then if you have someone who does not know how to play chess, then you're right. stuck. Yeah. So you have to think about that when you're making these puzzles. So the point here being that uh, I probably won't be able to, able to open this because I didn't bring my solutions. But uh, <laughs> So the point, the way chess works is that the first piece um, basically why it has to start? You know, there's only one possible. There's mm -hmm. only one possible way that this board can end up looking this way. Oh, I see. Okay, how so, did those pieces get there? Yeah, yeah. And Got then you it. see okay. the other thing. So <laughs> the first thing is that some a white piece moved up. So the first thing is right because you look at the gray arrows on that mm -hmm. thing here. So and I hope this makes sense to people at home. If not, I do apologize. I thought it sounded like a cool idea when I did it. So so it's basically the first one's going to be up. Uh, no no left because that's left gray arrow, but mm -hmm. it's a white up, left gray arrow. And then the next one is, is black down, and that is just a down. Mm -hmm. And then you have a, a, a diagonal white, so that's a right. Then you have a diagonal black, so that's an up. Mm -hmm. And then another diagonal white. And then, yes, got then it. the lock <laughs> is open. So, you, so that, normally you have, I didn't know how much time it would have, so that's one of those things where it gets hectic because I'm thirsty, but all the world, <laughs> all the world is ending, and you right. know you need you to be able to. You get a little, to... a little frazzled about it. Exactly, yes. you know you have little... that time limit going yeah. here. So. And, and in the room, you've got this clock counting yeah, down. So we right have a song. <laughs> you have a movie going on. You have the zombies moaning, groaning in the oh. background, and then you have a timer that sort of is counting down all the time.
lots of distractions. It is, it is. So it's kind of a, and then so the last one, I'm just thirsty. So this is another example. Um, so this is just a riddle. Um, I'm not gonna uh, torment you and make. I'm just gonna Excuse tell you the, because um, I also want to. If people have any more questions or anything, then uh, if you have any more questions, but so is the it, solution. Do you have an idea? Uh, is it the moon? It's very close. It's very very close. Yeah. We're close. Can you? Uh, Nobody's. So nobody. Close. Anybody know? Does anyone know at home? Type in the it's answer. Close to being the moon. Not quite the moon. A star. Yes. Instead? Yes. Sorry. It yeah. is. It is. Well done. <laughs> so this is a word lock that has yes. a whole bunch of letters around yes. it, and you guys spell out the word. There you go. So that's obviously more. I mean, so this is an easy one. You have a riddle, mm -hmm. and you can just find a riddle online, mm -hmm. honestly. Or you can. We had another thing. We had is a bunch of books with puzzles and riddles in them. Right. So that, that's another thing I wanted to. That, that you can also use if you want to do this on a smaller scale. You probably have some in your collection already. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, sure. mine, just mine teases and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so we use that a lot as well. So the kid, we just had them out for the kids to sort of use. And now I can, uh, yeah. now I can hide it. Cool. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, so, so that's, this, this is a very, and also, another thing I want to say that um, this is great with a little bit of candy. Like mm -hmm. if they, if you, I mean, you can always motivate with some snacks. Yeah, of course. So we did that as well. So. Do you I mean, want your pizza? I had had a great time <laughs> with with showing them candy and then locking the candy in boxes, and now you have to work for it. Mm -hmm. It works. I mean, they get a little annoyed, but it works. <laughs> it works out well, you know, because it's fun. Because now you, yeah. you sure you can have all this candy, but you do need to think about it first. Yeah. Um, so where do you get those the locks or those? This is just am, am, uh, all these on Amazon. Amazon, uh, okay. Yeah. You also have. I would do. They have. You know, they have a. I guess. Uh, you know. Home Depot, uh, I bought some at Walmart, locks, you know. Yeah, for regular your traditional uh, number yeah. locks, yeah. And, and also with, uh, like, I didn't bring one, but also just locks with keys are fun because then you can hide the okay. keys somewhere clever. Oh, right. There's a, there's the a lot clue, of, the puzzle a lot gets of, you to the key, it gets you to the There's a lot of stuff you can yeah. think about. Uh, so just regular key locks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I really, uh, um, that's a, that's a, it's a ton of different devices. I really, I like the idea of, and it came to us later, the, the, the simple, how simple it can be, that you really don't have to, have this gigantic room. I mean, you technically, mm -hmm. if you're really ambitious, you can do it on a much larger scale and have your entire library be in the escape room. That's true. I, mean, I, know, really, I was, I was really, thinking uh, about that because some libraries do do um, the lock-ins for the kids in sure, the evening yeah. sometimes now. That that could be the event. So that that was sort of you, you, so then you would uh, you you have like these boxes around the library where it makes sense, and then they had to go around and find things within mm -hmm. the building, and you know look for things in books and in nooks and crannies. That would be great mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah. So it can sort of scale from being an entire building. So being just a simple box, right. um, technically it could just be a lock without a box, but it's kind of more fun to have this. Uh, something that you get after. Yeah, yeah, and it's opening something. Like said, it's something it kind of resonates very well with them. So, mm -hmm. uh, and me as well, I like it. So, <laughs> so this last one, if anyone has any questions, this is my, I put my email up there. We mm -hmm. happen to talk about it. I linked to a, mm -hmm. a video with some of the projects mm -hmm. that came out of this. Um, from the, the grant we got, mm -hmm. we were in the library journal. Uh, yes, I saw that Yeah, article, so yeah. I linked to that as well. Um, I will be presenting uh, about this at the NLA conference in October as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll be going through a lot of the same things. Um, uh, so uh, so I'll be happy to meet cool. with anyone that would be interested in learning more about this and for advice. Um, I, was, I didn't know you were going to be. I haven't looked at the schedule no, yet sure. for conference. I didn't even know you were going to be doing this at conference. I just we've been following the articles as this has been going on, sure. and waiting for it to be finished so oh, that yeah, I can yeah. have you come on the show. No, but, yeah, but it's it's fine. I mean, I, I like talking about it. It's, it's fun for me to sort of. Uh, um, mm -hmm. To be out there, and I, I hope we really had such a good um, response. Mm -hmm. People really yeah. respond well to it in the community, and just and they, I know the kids had fun. They kept coming back. I, that, that's a good sign of Absolutely. them liking it. And, and we had, we also had uh, kids asking when we're we doing it again. <laughs> and since, as you mentioned, I, I'll be stepping down or moving mm -hmm. soon, so I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't make any lofty promises because it, it's it's right. a lot of work, especially on this scale. But that's mm -hmm. a, that's why I think these smaller boxes can be fun. Right. They can just be a one-off thing. But now that it's been done, and that's what somebody asked, and we had kind of talked about this before, mm -hmm. it would be difficult to change it to a different room, a different room or challenge. I suppose now that you've done it once, mm -hmm. it will be easier another time. But you still have yeah. to go through the same process of, like you said, well, new puzzles, new themes. If you have yeah. the boxes set up like we have, we have boxes with locks in our mm -hmm. room. We have the computer set up with the way you put in the codes, and you have mm -hmm. all those things. Um, well, right, like half of the room that's being built is not puzzles, but the flavor. So it's all these weird sure, zombies. Right. That, that will take time. And, yeah. But that mm -hmm. being said, um, 
it not might not be as bad as you would think because most libraries that I know have Christmas decorations and Halloween oh, decorations. Oh, sure, they change around. stuff all the time. Yeah. So if they just put all that in the room suddenly, just now it's a Christmas room. Mm -hmm. um, then it's not that hard to change. I mean, yeah. you, again, you can change the flavor, or you can change. Like I had the riddle, the star riddle here. Mm -hmm. That's not very original. I just looked something up online this morning because <laughs> I knew it would be coming. You know, I was too late in preparing for this. Um, <laughs> But you know, it doesn't take a lot of time to, to change the the basic mm -hmm. puzzles. Yeah. And and since the room is there, and since there's lots of resources out there for yeah, that. It really, yeah, it really, really is. And, and and now, if I had to do a new one, it would take a third of the time that it did the yeah. first time around. So you Once know, you uh, it out. It, it's very doable. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, a few other questions have come in. If you do guys ha guys do have any other questions, go ahead and type them in, or tell me you have a microphone. You can ask your question that way. Um, I'm gonna jump around a little bit here, but um. And I don't think I mentioned this. Is there a minimum or maximum number size to the group? Oh, like question. how many yeah. how many people um, should it take to do well to do this? Absolutely. So yes. again, I will refer to the the manual for for, for all the rules and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, again, I didn't, but I did not mention that though. No. Um, and that's what isn't that what the word we have that word document? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so this is going to be available just so you guys yes. know afterwards. Um, this is how I can just show you briefly. This Word document we're going to make available with um, the show um, recording. Yes. So you'll uh, have this is all there. So this is sort of there. So as I as I can read from from here, like we welcome groups of, uh, of four or six players once a day. Why okay. once a day? Because it takes time to reset the room, uh -huh. and if you need a staff member to be there, you don't want it to you don't want to have them dovetail each other because then you know, it just you need it time. takes a while yeah. to, to reset it. Um, but we say four or six players. That's a kind of a it's just it's a guideline. It doesn't have to be that way. We had three people go through it successfully, but those were three adults. Yeah. I would say at least two adults and maybe uh, two kids, mm -hmm. at least, because it's just some Reated. of these things take time. Yeah. Even though you're the smartest person in the world, it still takes time to solve the puzzle. Because um, yeah. you physically you have to do things. Like you have mm -hmm. to actually solve jigsaw puzzles, and no matter how good you are at it, it will still take it's time. It's gonna take time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but but for four to six people, that's what we sort of recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, for that size, yes. okay. And you didn't actually charge anything for this. No. You said you, you said if they want to give a donation to the library, we that's have, nice. But we have some no people charge. donate uh, money. Uh, we do say free will donation. Mm -hmm. It's mostly for fun. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Um, I, I like the most escape rooms that you do go to, like that they have are professional ones that you, they you charge have to pay. A lot, yeah. Of course, well, a lot. Yeah. It depends on what you think a lot is, but some of them can be fairly expensive. It just mm -hmm. they charge like. Up to I see like twenty five dollars per person. So this is a good um, way to do it for cheap. Okay. Uh, yeah. But we had. A lot of we had quite a few. We had some donations come in. Mm -hmm. and, you know, cool. it's we don't we don't we don't uh, stand with our hand like this. We're waiting for money <laughs> so it's a kind of no. It's a library it sir, program, which yes. like anything is traditionally. Usually they're free. Sometimes there's like if you're doing a craft, they pay I, for the, uh, the supplies depending we, on the the program. If yeah. we had paid for all this ourselves with taxpayer money, for example, like oh, right. and, yeah. especially with all this extra mm -hmm. stuff we got, then that might be more of a point than actually making it business model mm -hmm. out of it, but that's not at all what this was. Right. Honestly, the most important thing for us was the, the process up to the room being open. Mm -hmm. It's it's super fun to have one now. Mm -hmm. But the important yeah. part of this was honestly the building building it. You know, that was that, that's I think yeah. that's when they, they that that's yeah, that's most of this uh, one that I thought was I mean we escape rooms we've heard about all of but having the kids involved yeah. with creating it so and everything. We like to really say we're the deep. first one in the world that when yeah. we had kids building one. I mean I'm not it's hard to be sure of that, but I hadn't heard of I have not heard of other places. As far as we know, yes. Mm, we'll there say. Goes. <laughs> yeah. Now for for that budget, um, someone is asking. You had seventy five hundred dollars from that grant. Do you have a breakdown of how it was spent, or yes. do you can? Uh, and not yeah. with me. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Approximately a little less than half that was materials. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, that's buying like the robot and the TV we wanted. We yeah, some, from the big screen TV, Yeah, these locks, yeah. if you these locks are, are great, but you know, they also if you buy enough of them, they also start costing money. Um, right. and just various we needed some Chromebooks to run some of our puzzles, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a little less than half in that. Then we had a thousand dollars approximately for marketing. So that's mm -hmm. also just and we so that was great to get the word out that we still have some marketing right. money left. We're still gonna push it uh, later this year. Yeah, uh, that going on. Then we had uh, money for food. Mm -hmm. And then we had money for, uh, and that's, I would say, like a little more than a thousand dollars. It's basically just getting food every Saturday for a group of twenty for kids. The kids that, that costs cost money it. too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had uh, materials for the library, so we got to buy some puzzle books. I think mm -hmm. we had approximately, I'm gonna say, six hundred dollars to buy materials. Mm -hmm. So to, to kind of 
boost our collection sure. with just getting more books about puzzles and mm -hmm. brain teasers and whatnot. And then finally, we had uh, something for um, for marketing. And market, marketing, I also I already mentioned that one last thing. Yeah, materials for kids. So what I ended up giving all of them was a has been a lock at the end. So they oh, also they got they, yeah home. they got That's something nice. like so they got to choose a specific lock because after they they played with these things for four months it's kind of cool to get their own <laughs> yeah. so they can go home and I'm gonna lock that parents' fridge or something <laughs> out and just make them solve a real to open it. So, trouble. Uh, <laughs> Where did you get the puzzle books from? Is there do you have specific ones that you would recommend or? I can or send some. I that was on it. I couldn't. I, I can't remember honestly. Yeah. I mean, we bought them in in, in February last year. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't remember but, exactly what we. Uh, if you want to, I would say um, email. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Email them and ask. There's the email address. Sure, send still, me, I'll send you a list of what yeah. we got, what we had there. And you still also, be there through, through Thanksgiving. Then absolutely, he goes on to yes, another yes. Job. <laughs> and I also, but, um, what we also got was then one of the retired math teachers from one of the high schools in town came mm -hmm. by with a stack of books because he heard about it. Ah, so that's just, just, they had their just, own, yeah. uh, um, But I, I just send me an email. I'll send you, send you a list of some of the books we have. So yeah. Cool. All right. yeah. um, and someone else wants to know, related to conference, um, they actually are want to um, are visiting, going to be visiting Nebraska City um, after the after our conference. They want to know when you're open on Saturday so they can come and take a look at but before, it. Before um, after the conference, just uh, you can you can book a, a time. Just call the library and book a time, but it has to be before one o'clock, typically mm -hmm. on a Saturday. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Um, but how? What are the regular hours of the library just to come and visit? Uh, oh, 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 room, sorry. oh, that's just, uh, until just, until five. Uh, nine, uh, nine to five. Nine to five on Saturday. There you go, Claudette. You can stop by there. Cool. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I could answer that one. <laughs> and I see you said you're, you've written an article that's going to be coming up for. I read the. Um, yeah, in the library with the like pie. We, mm -hmm. we just got um, we accept it, so we're supposed to submit our first draft in a couple of weeks. So, mm -hmm. um, so it'll be mm -hmm. it'll add a lot to what was not in the the library journal article. is sort of a shorter one, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this one is more of comprehensive of, uh, I guess, all the the lofty ideas behind mm -hmm. why we do this mm -hmm. and what sort of makes sense. Um, so, um, I right. yeah, have not worked enough enough on that yet, but I, <laughs> <laughs> you get time. I will get on yeah. to that. I will get on that. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Any other last minute? Are, are we wrapped up then? Uh, I know no, this is I, your I, last I, slide. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is my last slide. Um, I just want to really recommend looking at this to see sort of the basics of how mm -hmm. it, I think it makes sense after having watched this presentation to sort of see, um, to just read this through real quick and, and uh, there's rules. But uh, so there are rules and then there are all the puzzles. Just to give you an idea sort of what the puzzles are, were, what the puzzles were in our room. Um, so it can, um, I think, just give that a read if you're interested in all this, and I'll bring this and, and similar mm -hmm. these things to in a later. But if you're well. planning on going and doing the puzzle, the, yeah, doing the schedule, don't, don't, don't look don't. at it this first because this point, is yeah. all the answers this is, I mean, yeah, for this particular one. Yeah, so if some group of librarians show up after the NLA cool, and, yeah. and solve it in ten minutes, then I'll be suspicious. <laughs> He'll know you got it. I, I don't know. I'll be on to you. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you very well, much. Thank you. Yes, awesome. thank you, yeah. everyone. Um, yeah, since we have kind of been mentioning it, can you um, tell us where you're off to for your new job? I will. Yes. Because you, uh, yes, you've been here in Nebraska for quite a few years now. Yes. When did you? you oh, how three long years been, more or been less. Three years uh, at yeah. James. Yeah. Well, I will. Um, well, I, I have the, the great honor of being the new executive director of the Museum of Danish America in Elkhorn in Nebraska in, in Iowa. In um, Iowa. It's going over to Iowa. Yeah. Well, I'll still be living in, in Nebraska, but. Um, <laughs> So yeah, no, it's a really fantastic opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it'll be very, very, very cool for me to sort of go into that field and, mm -hmm. and still be working with the cultural heritage from a slightly right. different angle, I guess, perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I get to you know interact more. With, I get to sort of work with both my homes, but I do mm -hmm. feel at home in Nebraska, but yeah. it'll be in, in, in the Midwest and in America in, in general. In general yeah. So, yeah. but uh, I look forward to sort of having more uh, to do with with, with Denmark again. Mm -hmm. Right, so where you're from. You, yeah. you do end up missing it when you're not. Of course. You know, we haven't been you know, home. I mean, I get to go home, but not as often as I would like. You know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Oh so, yeah. So, yeah. I, I I am only from New York, and I get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you know, you know what I mean. You know, sometimes you just want to go back, so it'll be it'll be cool to do it like professionally as well. Yes. So, uh, You'll have reasons to travel. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah. I will be, yeah. So, no, I'm I'm very excited. It's, it's it's a really great honor for me, and I was very happy that, that yeah. chose me. Yeah. So. It seems to be a perfect fit, as I'd mentioned. I, I think I, yeah. I hope so. I think so too. <laughs> and, 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 and I'd ask you before. I just want to say now we're on the show. Um, 
here in, in Lincoln we have the um, Society for Germans from Russia, so obviously that's a population here. And is Iowa was a big place where a lot of people came from Denmark in the United States, and that's why yes, it's there, I, I or was, just Midwest in general? Mid Midwestern, like uh, Omaha, is, has a lot, has a tremendous amount of people actually uh, hmm. claiming Danish uh, ancestry or Danish heritage. So, so hmm. I mean, you there are several pockets. Mm -hmm. um, sure. U Utah, actually, there's a lot of uh -huh. uh, okay. Danish Americans out in California, Minnesota, mm -hmm. um, so Des Moines mm -hmm. and, and Omaha. So, so the reason why sort of I think specifically where the museum is located is, is just one of the places where the, a lot of people came over at a certain mm -hmm. time, and so oh, and they just yeah settled yeah, in one so, place. So it, once, it, yeah, so so it is it's 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 a it's a fantastic <laughs> museum really. I would recommend mm -hmm. everyone to come and see. It. But that's another thing. <laughs> but you but, said it's only like an hour from Omaha. It's Iowa, hour, so yeah, it's pretty so cool. So it is really. Bad, yeah. uh, I, I was first time. I was kind of floored by how by the scope of what they've done out there. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, good luck. Well, Thank you we'll, so much. We'll miss Thank you. you. Although you're still going to be in Nebraska and doing things. So. Nebraska, very much, yes. And you're not leaving completely, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think we will wrap it up for today then. Thanks, no man. other urgent questions came in about your presentation. At the well, moment. we're good. So, uh, um, but thank you very much, Ernest. Absolutely. This is great. As I said, we've been following along with the news articles as you know, we got the grant and then oh, they're working yeah, on yeah. it and we're like waiting and waiting for it to come, you know, be a real thing. And I, I, I'm glad it's. It, like it turned out. I mean, one, yeah. in, in hindsight, I would have done things differently, but I would mm -hmm. not have. But I, I but I've also done it the same way. It, it turned out really well for us, and it wasn't mm -hmm. just a lot of fun. And I think doing something like this for a public library is just it really is a great way to get get out there. And, and oh yeah. It just it's it's a lot of um, not necessarily free, but a lot of good advertising and marketing and just. Uh, Branding providing us. something for the and that's what a lot of library programs are providing something for people in the community to come and do mm -hmm. and participate yes in. So, and know. this is one thing these escape rooms are becoming very popular yeah, so. I know I see lots of people posting their pictures of we made it out of yeah, this one or whatever so why wouldn't a library do it yeah. Yeah, well it's, and I think framing it in that creative thing where the mm -hmm. where you have kids actually building it yeah. just worked out really well for us so. educational Yes, very much. <clears throat> awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank Email you. them with any questions you have um, over the next month or so. <laughs> yeah. Month or two. Well, a couple That'll still be there. Um, and check them out if you're here coming to Nebraska to the Nebraska Library Association, School Library Association Annual Conference is up in Omaha in later this month, October 20th, that week, as he said. And um, keep your eye open for the article coming soon. And we'll find when that link comes, I, I read that. Site too, so oh, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll add it to the links when it's actually. Oh, good, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Well, awesome. thank you, and thank you everyone for attending. Um, as we said, the show has been recorded, is being recorded as we speak, as we sit here. Um, it will be loaded onto our website later um, this afternoon, um, and I'll show you where that is here. Let's grab the keyboard. What's great about Encompass Live so far? Yeah, if you spell it right. Come on. All right. This keyboard is not participating. Okay. If you spell it right and your keyboard works, eh, close enough. Um, <laughs> we're pretty much the only thing called Encompass Live. So Google Encompass Live or any variation, <laughs> and you can find our website. Um, the current the show that we just recorded will be here right underneath our upcoming shows is our archived sessions um, and that will show you where this is what we've got from previous um, last week's section session was on Pokemon Go um, and then we'll have the same thing later today will be the recording the PowerPoint slides and um, the, the handout the Word document with the, the guide and any of the links that were mentioned during the show will be all available there. Um, all of you who attended will be sent an email to let you know when it's um, ready. Um, so that wraps up for today's show. Um, hope you join us next week when our topic is circulating the internet how to loan Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, our uh, Norfolk, uh, Norfolk Public Library up in northeastern Nebraska has started doing this um, just this year. Um, and uh, Jessica Chamberlain is their director and a couple of their staff people will be on with us next week to talk about how they are doing this. I know I've seen articles about things like New York Public Library doing it and big yeah, programs, yeah. Um, but they're doing it here locally as well. So they're going to um, come on and tell us um, how they are doing that. 
Um, as I mentioned, uh, the NLA annual conference is coming up. That week is the one week of the year that we do not have a show. Um, we take one week off. That's it. Every other week I'm here. <laughs> um, and because we're all at conference for that. So the week after that, there will not be an Encompass Live. That's the one. So don't worry about that. But we'll be back the next week with um, Comic-Con Maker Cons at your library. So check in with that as well. Um, also, if you are on Facebook, Encompass Live does have a Facebook page. You can click here to get to it. And this will probably pop up with some annoying thing about joining Facebook because it always does. Um, there we go. Um, but we post here when our shows are coming up, when our recordings are available. So if you want to, and here's a reminder to log into today's show. So if you're big on Facebook user, um, you give us a like over there and you'll be notified of what we're doing on the show. And that wraps it up. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Rasmus, for coming over for this morning. And we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.